Today it's all about point work with three-way points and MP10 point motors. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie and in this video we're continuing with the track laying in the upper freight yard. So this is a video, this is a continuation of video 216. Now if you haven't seen 216 there should be a link up here unless you're watching on your smart TV which obviously isn't as smart as you thought it might be. Mine certainly doesn't do it. Right, so what are we going to show you this time? Now before we get stuck in too much I've had a little bit of a change of plan and we've gone back to Sean Lawless's original uh, thought of using a curved point here. Now I thought it was a set track point um, with an insure frog but it isn't. They now make an electro frog uh, point and it's actually this is actually a uni frog point and its number is SLU76 so we'll be installing one of these. Now but the key component here is this three-way point here. Now I've never been a lover of three-way points so we shall now see if I get my fingers burnt and then from the three-way point we have two double slips. All good stuff. So how are we going to start installing all this? Well I think the key player in all this really is the three-way point. So what, what I shall do is we need to carry out a couple of um, modifications to this Pico three-way point um, and then fit it to the board and then we build the rest of the layout, the freight yard, around this point. So it's fundamental that we get this installed and in the right place. Now I am in the fortunate situation that this board is actually not pinned down so we can take it up, put it on its side and do our, our work away from the layout which is obviously a great advantage. But first let's get onto the bench and carry out these modifications. So here we are on the bench. So let me glasses on this time. So this is the SLE99 three-way inch uh, electro frog point. Um, coming out of the packet what do you get? Well there's these two wires that come off the two top frogs and some insulated sleeving that you can use with it. We'll come back to that. Um, and obviously on the back of the packet there are the destructions. Now these are, these are vital to read really. So if I get a pointy stick and so we're looking at the underside of this point. Now as you can see there are two wires that come in from their Pico switches. Now I'm not going to use these switches, I will use my own slow action point motors. Right, but as you can see the two point motors, there's one at the foot and one further up and it's the one at the base, if you follow the cable it comes up into this section of the frog. So if I put this here, if that makes any sense at all. So therefore the cable would come from this point motor and it would come out around to wire up to there. So this, this frog here, okay, it goes to the bottom one, whereas this frog here goes to the top one. But there's a complication here because the top one has more wiring as you can see, which actually comes down here. So what's that about? Well, this top one actually powers both this frog and this frog whereas the bottom one only powers this frog. I know it sounds confusing but it's because I've turned it over. So just run through that again. So it's the bottom point motor here and if you follow the cable from there it runs up into here into this section. Easy kind of. Um, so there are, there are three frogs with two point motor wires so all we've got to do is remember that. Okay. Now we could trim these wires down um, but I'll leave them as they are for now and see if they get on my wick. Um, but we need to go into what I'm going to do with this modification. Now hopefully you can see that here there is a piece of metal showing through. So what I intend to do is I'm going to cut away the webbing here, 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 here and here. So that's the bits of plastic I'm going to cut away and then solder underneath. Now why on earth would I want to do that? Well it's quite simple really because the way this point is designed 
there is no connection and there's no electrical connection between say these three rails and these three rails so to that end if there's any dirt between the uh, switch rail and the stock rail then you lose power to that section of the point and to show you that I have a, a little little tester which runs too loud so <laughs> I, if you uh, if you're on headphones you might need to turn it down I'll just show you the volume of it right so if I put one end of the tester on this stock rail here and then with the other one I'm going to dab it on these rails so clearly this rail here is now connected to this one here so obviously if I get it's and there and this one here nothing now if I just make this point obviously then there is nothing here but if I put it back and then just pull it off the stock rail just a smidge like that because a tiny bit of a gap there now then it stops so the idea is by bonding together these three rails and then these three rails we don't have any running issues should we get a tiny amount of dirt at the foot of the point between the switch blades and the stock rails ideal right and the other thing of course is we, we need to get power onto this point in the first place so how are we going to do that well if we're going to come in here and start soldering cables then my my my, my train of thought is where we simply uh, get one cable one red and one black and we go we we sold it from there to there to there and away for track power into the into the, the point motor and similarly with this one then we will solder from there to there to there and back to the point motor and all that palaver so there we are that's how to me it makes sense so what we need to do next is with a sharp tool we need to cut away this webbing now a gentleman was very kind to me uh, a few days ago because Pete, I won't mention you, well, I, yeah, Pete Walton sent me a gift. Well, not only me, <laughs> he sent me a Margaret. Um, he obviously saw me struggle cutting through the plastic card when I was doing the, the raised section. So he sent me, bless him, a, uh, a knife and a pack of blades. And the, the knife is a real beastie, which is this little gem here. And it's made by... Rolson, there we are, um, because he was sort of worried about me doing myself some damage. There's a bit of irony here, really, because to get this knife out of the packet, I had to use a Stanley knife to open it up, <laughs> but it's to replace my Stanley knife. Pete, you're too kind, and there's a box of chocolates in there for Margaret. She'll be chuffed to bits, mate. Right, onward. So now we need to take the knife and cut into these sections and remove the plastic. Um, so I may use the knife and I may all use a pair of sprue cutters because they're quite delicate. So I'll first try with the old sprue cutters and see how we get on. Of course, the last thing you want to do is damage the point. Now I'll have to go with a knife. It's obviously a bit more plastic here than I originally thought. Yeah, it's quite thick. Anyway, you've got the general idea of it, so we just need to dig that plastic out. And I'm sure in next to no time we'll have done it. Get in there, a little bit left in there. Yep, and the last bit. Tiny bit there. Yeah. 
Okay. Right, I'll do the other one and then get back to you. Well, there we are. That wasn't too difficult at all. Now, before we solder it, of course, we need to roughen up the, uh, the metal to give the solder something to cling to. So I'm just using a file to take away the kind of shine, as it were. Sorry, not take away the shine, but to, you know, scratch it up a bit. To make sure that the solder has a good surface to cling to. Okay, now soldering. This is a really basic soldering iron. It's no big deal. Um, I can't tell you where I've got it. It's probably from the Amazon store and there may be a link to it in the old um, Amazon show more tabby thing. Um, my go-to temperature is 400 degrees. I think that's centigrade anyway. Um, and the lead, the solder I use is 60-40 um, lead. I do not use lead-free solder. I'm sorry, but I just find that it's not as, I don't know, sticky, I don't know, but it's not my go-to solder. This is mine. Right, so hopefully we can do this in quick time. Now, can we see that all right? Yeah, I think so. Right, so in goes the soldering iron. A little bit of heat. I don't want to hang around in here because I don't want to start melting the, the webbing. So there's a dot of solder there. Give it a little blow as I as I do it just to keep the fumes away from your face. Okay, let's have a look. Might need a bit more on this one here. And for some reason, I've got a bit of solder on the plastic webbing there. Odd. Right, so there we go. All I need to do now is to get some cable. Now, I'm going to wire this up with 1602. That is 16 strands of 0.2 millimetre uh, cable. And my layout is wired black to the back on the upper level. Now, it's quite strange, really, because as you look at it this way, that's that's actually the back of the layout. So this is the front of the layout if you view it from the main area of the layout. So this side here, this side here needs to be red. So I need some cable. So here we are with my 1602 cable and a pair of wire strippers. And hopefully that distance there, nope, just a little bit longer. To bridge all three rails. Yep, looking good. So hopefully the iron is ready to go. And I now need to tin this cable. Lovely job. And then it's just a case now of doing, starting from the end of the cable and then soldering them on. So this is the first one. What I then do is stop, let the thing cool down and give it a tug and actually make sure that we are on. And yes, we are. So then we need to Go on to the next bit of the rail. And this time we'll add some solder as well. A 
and yes we are and then finally the outside rail and there we are and then if I bend it down hopefully it should hide it fairly well um, when we're sort of ballasting right so there's the first one let's just cut that cable and then I should just repeat the same for the black cable on the other side okay give that a tug bend it down that seems okay right now of course we ought to test them how do we do that well we can use our little machine again if you don't happen to have a, um, a multimeter test this oh there we are so we should now have continuity between certain rails so we're happy with this one so the contact is on there so we want to get continuity between this and the second one knowing that the point is now open so previously we this would not go beep and obviously it does and then we shall make this point here so now the middle this, this one here should not go beep so sorry it should go beep but previously it would not have gone beep I even got the wrong way around myself beautiful so that side is all working fine beautiful and then we'll check the other line so we should have make the point the other way so just to test it it's fine and then going to the first rail and then push that one across and now the second rail lovely so we know we have continuity running across our, our bridging pieces as it were so what's next well next thing I want to take a little look at these two um, frog cables now I've snipped off the two long frog wires um, and I've left about a kind of an inch uh, showing and I'm using uh, 702 cable is it as in green because all my frog labels uh, all my frog, frog wires are green and all I'm going to do is solder that onto there and as usual just tin the cables now I've marked this one out with a tag on the end called toe figure that out haven't we because this is the one that going on the bottom right so hopefully we can get that on there lovely and the second one <clears throat> okay now what I thought I would do is use a little bit of hink shrink heat sh heat shrink tubing over that join and this is a little set that I bought from Amazon point tool lots of different sizes useful bit of kit and there may be a link in the show more tab right so if I just snip off some of that yep cut it in half and it might do both and then thread that down there and hopefully that will cover the joint lovely and with the old side of the soldering iron now is just to go on and shrink that shrink the heat shrink as it were Obviously you don't want to put too much heat into it, you'll melt the solder on the inside. However unlikely that sounds. Okay, there we are. Just need to put my toe label back on again. 
Well, there we are. That's the point complete. So I think the next thing to do is uh, fit it to the board. Now, fortunately, I build it in a modular fashion so I can take it off the layout and put it on the bench. But this way, I can fit the point, turn it over and show you exactly what's going on underneath when we wire it all up. Right, so what do we do need to do first? Well, you can see here the layout of the track plan which I've drawn in earlier. So now we need to mark up the track plan to where I need to drill the holes to drop the cables through, which should be reasonably straightforward. So the power cables come down there and then it's a bit of a, a guest job really with the dropper cable, uh, with the um, frog cables. We'll try about there and try about there. Okay, excuse the noise. Clearly the battery's just gone on that. Right, just in time. Right, thread these cables through. And are we in the right place? Unfortunately, yes we are. We're a little bit out on the power cables, I think. But nothing to write home about. Okay, so the next thing to do is to secure the point to the baseboard. And what we use, well, what I use is I drill a hole in the, in a couple of sleepers and screw it down which might seem a bit drastic to you, but once it's ballasted, I can take out the screws, fill in the holes, a little bit of paint, and we'll be done. Now I use these tiny screws, and I bought these from Buffers down in Devon from the lovely Lady Maria, who runs the shop. And she does post out if you need any of these, just tell her the, have an idea of the length of screw you wish to buy. Okay, we're in, happy. Now, if you've ever tried to fit a point and then do all that stuff underneath on a blank board, you'll know it's a nightmare. And if you're into tortoise point motors, you'll know that there's a little sort of jig they use. You drill a hole through where the, where the pin comes through, and then hopefully you can drill the other holes around it, and your tortoise point motor will then kind of line up in the right place. Um, and the throw of the out armature then should be in the right place. Well, to be perfectly honest, it's not that straightforward. So is there another way around it? Well, indeed there is. There's a gentleman who owns a company called Scenic 3D. Now, Scenic 3D produce jigs, and I've used their tortoise point motor jig in the past. It's brilliant. Now, what does it do for us? Well, they make this jig here, which is a jig for the symmetrical three-way point. How does that work then? Well, you sort of lay it on the top and with a little bit of fiddling, you put it into place. Now there are two holes and the two holes go where the two point motor armatures, armature wires come through. So you, oh, and this is the end obviously for the point and this is the end that goes straight. So now it's a case of just jiggling it around a little bit until it sort of drops into place and it sort of moves around the the rails of the point itself 
and then suddenly it just sort of finds its own sort of place of where it should be. Oh, that one's going in, I think. And you're there. There we have it. Beautiful. Now, before we go any further, it's worth mentioning about point motors and what I'm using. Oh, these these jigs, when you contact Scenic 3D, you need to tell them which point motors you're going to use because they make them for cobalts, they make them for tortoises, and the ones that I'm using today for MTB, this is the, bear, bear with me, this is the MP10. Now, the guys who make these things clearly aren't stupid because they've made them the exactly the same form factor as the tortoise. So that if you have a torch that packs up, then you can pop one of these in. Even the wiring system is identical with the two outside terminals running the point motor and then two switches within it. Lovely. So how does it all work then? Well, in this drill, I have a two millimeter drill bit. And in this little hand drill, there's a 1.3 millimeter drill bit. So now we want to drill carefully, right? So, through the template, I then drill the eight holes, which will line up with these eight. Oh, sorry, one other thing worth mentioning is the reason I'm not using tortoises is because this board is so low that with this underneath it, the trains will collide with the tortoise. Whereas, because I'm using these, the, I then have adequate, clear, adequate clearance. Right, so now I need to drill the eight holes around the outside. And I'm going straight, oh, I'm going straight through into the board below and I do know that there is nothing underneath and I have checked underneath for the whole of this layout prior to drawing the track plan in. Lovely. Now, finally, we go manual now, take this off. And then I bring the, the uh, point to the central position, pop in my little drill, and I just go through and mark out where I need to drill through. So I'm not drilling right through, I'm just marking on the cork where the central position of the point motor is. Beautiful. So what's next? Now we need to take the point back off again. Now we can see the two drill marks caused by my um, small drill going into here. So we can see exactly where I've been drilling because now we need to come in with a large drill and drill out the proper sized holes for the armature wire to move in. Now being certain of where these marks are, I take a 10 mil drill. And hopefully they're in the right place. looking fine. Right, now the next thing I do is I remove the springs from these point motors. Now please don't do this unless you are quite sure on how to do it or that or and you have a requirement to do it. With the tortoise point motors I always remove the springs so to be perfectly honest I do the same with these MP10s but if you do this then um, you know you <laughs> You know, you, you're not going to get the spring back in if you change your mind. Uh. 
And another thing perhaps worth mentioning is Pico do not recommend removing their springs. So there's one. And there's the other. So nothing's really changed except for now there is no springy <laughs> springiness in the point motor. Okay, right. Refit it and then screw it back down and then we'll flip the board over. I was just wondering, if you're enjoying this video, I do hope that you become a subscriber. Now, like any sensible person, before we fit any MP10s, we're going to test them first, aren't we? Now, looking at this diagram, we can see that internally there are four holes and one of which of these holes will have a spigot in it. And depending on which scale you model, it could be a 3mm, a 6mm, a 9.5 or a 12.5 throw. And that's the distance that this thing will travel left and right. So, how do we do that then? Now, it's quite stra straightforward to wire up. So all I've done is put two wires on the side of here. And if I then, I'm going to turn this around. So if I then put these on the, the battery, you will see it slide along. Now all I've done is I've, I've, with a felt tip pen, I've made marks on the two areas where it stops on the throw. So we can actually measure that it is a six mil throw. And as you can see there, there's the measurement and it is six millimetres. However, on this one, hopefully you can see that it isn't six millimetres, it's only three. So I imagine if we open this one up, we'll find that the spigot will be in this position rather than this position. So let's open it up and have a look. Now the way I do this is I just slacken the screws off a little bit without taking the whole lid off and then hopefully this has enough room to pull out, not quite. don't particularly want it to fall apart. And there, as suspected, the spigot is in the 3 mil position rather than the 6 mil. Now, this is a little awkward. If you're going to do this, do it where you're not going to lose the spigot and don't go too hard on the, um, on the cutters. Just prise it out lovely and poke it in the other hole, just like that. Bang it in. And then the groove on the sliding mechanism needs to line up with the spigot. So we sort of pop it into place, open it up again, feels about right, do the screws up, back on the battery, and now hopefully it will have a a longer throw, let's say. Let's see if I can do this. And there we are, back into the longer throw. As you can see, there's the six mil. And there's the three. Right, good to go. Now I like to use a little bit of cork underneath my point motors it helps deaden the sound. And what I use, just ordinary little screws, and these are going to go through the pre-drilled holes when I came through from the other side, where we know these point motors, because of the jig, are going to be in the right place. So I just need to fit these four point motors. And then I'll get back to you regarding the alignment of the rod to change the point, po point motor position. Lovely. 
Now here's an interesting observation because I've got away with this by the skin of my teeth. Because these are so close together and the adjustments are on the front, I can just about get a screwdriver in here to do the adjustments. This could have been rather embarrassing. Um, the other way we are doing it, I just take one of these point motors off, set the other one up, get it dead right, take it out, put the other one back in, set it up, get it dead right, refit the other one, and it would just be fine anyway. But it is just uh, rather comical that it didn't occur to me before. Well, I don't imagine it's going to come much as a shock that they're in and working and all is well. However, it wasn't quite that simple. Um, one seemed to make a bit of a squeak when I was testing it, and what I'd done is because I put a piece of cork underlay underneath them I think what it was doing it was because it didn't come to the edge it was kind of bending the the uh, assembly so if I once I backed off the screws a little it just disappeared so just something to be aware of really but they're in and it's very much kind of does what it says on the box really this is not it's not very really dramatic one thing worth mentioning is the adjustments now hopefully you can see here that I can move this assembly, this, well there's two bits to the assembly. There's the back piece which moves with the point motor and attached to it is this front piece which you can adjust so you've got lateral movement. So if you find that your hold is a little bit out then clearly you can move this up and uh, to and fro and then tighten the screws up um, to get when, once it's in the right place. Very very useful. And also with the armature wire, you can slacken off the, the screw and then adjust the armature wire up and down. So it just protrudes through um, into the point and then lock it off. So you don't need to go and take a pair of snips to it as we've done in the past or a, a Dremel cutting disc to try and cut it off at the right height. So there are clearly a couple of advantages um, in using these. They are very nice, I can't deny it. Right, but where does that take this little bit of board? Well, this is the complexity of where we're heading. So we have, obviously, our three-way point is in here, and so our three tracks are sort of coming off here. A central track to go straight through. Here are the two double slips with their four associated MP10s and another point here going off towards some industry. Looking back the other way, and we've now got our um, short, small radius curved unifrog point in here. So what shall I do next? Well, that's really up to you. Um, obviously, there's the basic wiring and switching of the whole thing, but how you would change your MP10s or your tortoises or whatever is really a personal thing. I will use a stationary decoder um, because I want to do it by hand. I don't really want big clunky switches, but that's just a personal preference. So what would you like me to cover next? It's either going to be one of the two um, Code 100 Insule Frog double slips, how to sort of wire them up and stick them in, or of course we could do the um, the Unifrog curve point, all a bit of a um, something, you know, it's six one half asked of the <laughs> six of one, half a dozen of the other, really, isn't it? But there we go. Anyway, as usual, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you want to turn to these things, they're clearly a new kid on the block, nice and slim um, compared to the without these. I don't know what I've done really because of those the huge. Um, tortoise point motors would have just been in the way. I don't know what we would, how, how we would have got around that. But these are a really useful, nice commodity if you're stuck in space. So there we go. Easy as that. Right, so back to you there then. Um, I'd like to thank the patrons for making it all possible. There's the old button for if you'd like to become a subscriber. Thank you very much indeed for watching and there should be a video here and here. I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.